Thank you for being here. Today's class is an introduction to our upcoming series, How to Survive Sitting. You might think that's overly dramatic, implying that, that sitting is a catastrophe, but actually I think that it's a very accurate title and reflects the difficulties with sitting and I propose that in this six-week series, I will offer you healthy options that will eliminate or significantly reduce the stress that is in fact inherent in the way that most of us do sit. We as human beings, homo sapiens, we did not evolve to sit in chairs. Chairs were not in the environment when we evolved, when we came out of Africa, which you can date to a couple hundred thousand years ago, but we would sit on the ground, we would sit on a rock, or we squatted more likely. So chairs, to the best of our knowledge, have only been around for the last 4,500 years. So it's a very small fraction of a, of a millisecond of time in the breadth of time that we've been on this beautiful planet. At first, chairs were only for kings and queens. It was only for people of, of privileged status. And so now, of course, not only do we all have access to chairs, but in fact, sitting of one sort of an, or another is our primary dominant position, you could say. Most of us can be found uh, sitting in a chair, sitting on a sofa, sitting on a train, sitting in a car, sitting at the office. Maybe, maybe if you count the number of hours, minutes of the day that you sit, you'll be shocked to find, surprised to find that it can be from 10 to 14 hours a day. The fact that it's our primary and dominant activity, that means it has an enormous influence on our musculature, our skeleton, our well being in general. Because if we go deeply, we would find that the stasis of sitting, the fact that most of us, are, our movements are extremely constrained. We're not using a wide range of movement when we sit, affects, affects our vision, affects our, our digestion, affects the, the health of our joints. So um, it's having a significant influence on our well-being, and I believe that what what I will present to you in these six weeks will uh, significantly reduce the stress of sitting, and will illuminate the problem in such a way that I think you you will you will forever be able to sit in a in a healthier and more functional way. Um, I've studied the problem of sitting for, uh, I have to confess to you, over 40 years. It's something that um, uh, my beginning interest in sitting had to do with the, uh, the socio-political implications of people being constricted in such a way. So I was coming at it from a very different angle. And um, just before meeting Dr. Feldenkrais. And um, so I have, I have looked at the problem. I have investigated it. I have read most of the authoritative uh, academic papers on sitting. And, um, and they're, all, they're all intelligent. I mean, other, other people understand that sitting is a problem, a 
physical problem, a psychological problem in some ways. But what is their answer? What is their answer once they've identified the difficulty, once they've objectified it by looking at the number of pounds per square inch and uh, pressure on the spine and this and that? The answer is always the same. It's sit less, right? Walk more, get up more often, um, you know, move around. In other words, they don't have an answer. They don't have an answer for reducing the stress of sitting, except to, to, they all will say, get up, move around, use, use different chairs, use a variety of chairs. There is, there is no evidence, none, after, after, after some 40 years of fancy, fancy ergonomic chairs, there is no evidence that one chair is better than another. There is no evidence that people say, oh, I sit in that kind of fancy, fancy chair and I feel fantastic all day long. It's all the same. And a, a number of days and uh, there was one study showing that if you, if you switched out people's chairs every three days, that was the best option. You gave them a new chair to sit in. Now, what I say is that they, that all of these like-minded and intelligent people have not looked at one thing and the most important thing of all, which is how we sit. And I want to propose to you a kind of, I don't know, my, a radical thesis that the problem is not so much sitting, although we can all agree walking is more pleasurable than sitting, but that the problem is not sitting, but how we sit. How we sit is actually what causes the difficulties. So this, this six-week course, I hope to give you, to offer you the, the tools that we all need in order to understand, both understand the influence of sitting, understand how it is that, that sitting is, is truly stressful physically, um, but what is healthy sitting? How can we sit in such a way that we do get up and say, oh, you know, it doesn't bother me so much anymore. So um, in, in this six-week series, we'll, we, we will meet for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes on uh, Tuesday, uh, Thursdays, sorry. And, um, and I will provide for you quick little interventions that you can use you will be able to ask uh, questions that you have. We will have special recorded question and answer sessions. And so any, any kind of uh, challenge that you have in relationship to sitting, we will be able to address. Um, now, the, the lessons will, for the most part, be done in sitting. And if you have trouble sitting, we, we will help you to, to see if we can uh, adapt the lesson to an alternative position. But um, and we, will, we will have, uh, as I think Juniper stated, there will be a number of people on the staff who will be um, doing the lesson along with us. And if you have any question, you please um, just um, pin their screen. Um, so the, the means at our disposal is the work of Dr. Feldenkrais 
and he, and uh, I studied with him directly for a little over 10 years uh, until he, he passed away. And, and we're going to use the, the movement aspect of his work, which is called Awareness Through Movement. It, every lesson you will all be able to do, we will not do anything that will be beyond your range of ease and comfort. And you'll see how effectively, how effectively we can use movement to communicate directly and almost instantaneously with our brain. Um, we will use movement to access the extraordinary neuroplasticity that each of you have. You, we are all infinitely more capable and more intelligent than we understand. So um, we'll get started in a moment, but just a few uh, words that I would like to offer you about how we do the lesson. And if you think that, oh, that's the second time he's used the word how, then you're right. Our accent is always in, in the doing of awareness through movement. The accent is in how we're doing the movement, not how big, not how much, not how strongly. So on that note, when you're doing the lesson today, and I will repeat this, you don't have to write it down. As you're doing the lesson today, please pause between each movement. Please go slowly. It's the going slowly that allows the time to provide your brain with the information that it needs. So go slowly and make the movement easy and small. I know that sounds strange, but please make the movements small and easy and you'll see that the benefit will be extraordinary for you. So I will, I will keep these things foreground, these process or, or questions about how we do the lesson. So uh, please, um, you've been sitting for 15 minutes or so, so please just walk around for a moment and then come to your chair. Good. Now, uh, Juniper, if you could bring the illustration forward. All right. Thank you. So what I'd like you to do, and this will probably be true in most of the lessons that we do in the series when we're sitting on the chair is to come to the forward edge of your chair. So you come to the forward edge as far forward as you're comfortable coming. You don't want to come so far forward that the back legs of your chair begin to leave the floor. In other words, that you feel insecure. And, and if if your knees, if when you sit on your chair, your knees are higher than your hip joints, in other words, less than a uh, less, less than parallel to the floor, it's okay if, the, if your knees are lower than your hip joints, but if your knees are higher than your hip joints, you want to put some kind of cushion under yourself or, or as Mickey had a blanket that's folded up so that you raise the level of the seat that you're sitting upon and 
thus your knees are a little bit lower than your hip joints. I hope that's clear, but if you look at the illustration, this person's knees are a tiny bit lower than their hip joints, and that's completely fine. But if their knees were higher, and we can talk about this, understand the problem of having the knees higher, but it's compressing, it would be compressing their hip joints. So um, you'll see there'll be a tremendous advantage once you have the idea of the knees being a little bit lower than, than the hip joint. So that the, the, your leg bone, which is called your femur, is actually at a slight declination. It means if you were to put a, a, a marble on your thigh, one of your thighs, that that marble would roll down towards your knee. All right. Thank you, Juniper. All right. Please separate your feet about shoulder width apart. And put the pads of your fingers. That means not your fingertips, but the pads of your the last digit of your fingers upon your forehead, where you feel that your forehead begins to turn toward the top of your head. And now just, and your elbows are forward. In other words, your elbows are not out to the sides. Hopefully you can all see me, see, see your computer or your phone. Your elbows are forward, and then just slowly, you, you, you incrementally, there's the smallest amount, increase the pressure of your fingers on your forehead so that you lower yourself and you become round. And then you slowly come back to the neutral. Neutral is looking forward. Toward, toward the wall in front of you, toward an imaginary horizon. So we'll say it again. As you exhale, you, you're, again, your elbows are more or less forward. You use the pads of your eight fingers in, on, on your forehead to just create a hundredth of a gram of pressure. And that's enough that's enough to lower your head and your back. That's right. And you feel you, your back moves back. Your back moves backwards towards the back of the chair. And then just come return to the neutral position. Again, you exhale as you lower yourself. And indeed, your whole self is lowering. You can feel your chest is, becomes lower and smaller, in fact. And your elbows move down. And you just feel where you can reduce the effort. Can you make your hands a little softer? Again, it's not the, not the tips of your fingers, but the pads of your fingers. And, and, and the, your hands are higher than the ridge of your eyebrows toward where your, the top of your head, or sorry, your forehead begins to arc toward the top of your head. That's right. Now, see if you can feel that as you lower yourself, your neck gets a little longer. And then as you come back, as you come back to the facing forward, your, back, your neck is no longer long. See if you can feel that. In fact, your, your neck gets a little shorter. And then you lower yourself 
as you exhale and feel how your the weight of the pressure of your pelvis on the chair changes quite dramatically. In other words, your pel the weight and pressure of your pelvis on your chair moves toward your, your sacrum, moves towards the top of your pelvis, the back of your pelvis. Your weight moves towards the back of your pelvis and your pubic bone. If you know where your pubic bone is, where the two halves of, of your pelvis, of our pelvis is join, then your pubic bone is tilting a little bit toward your head. That's right. Good. Now, please just rest for a moment. Bring, bring the pads of both hands, all except for your thumbs. Your thumbs are, are, are resting, relaxed, and touching your head. Turn yourself to the right a little bit. Say just what's comfortable. Say 20 degrees to the right, as if you wanted to see something on your right knee and then slowly round yourself again. And then slowly come back. And you pause between each movement, just feeling where you can do less. That's really the only important thing. You'll find that this unique combination this unique combination of guided attention, attention with an A, that's right, and movement is what so effectively produces new information for your brain. Now, can you feel that when you you stay turned to the right and you lower your head can, and your back gets round again, but can you feel that your weight, when it goes backwards, it goes over your left hip. You begin with your, your head and eyes turned to the right, and then you lower yourself by increasing the thing, pressure, a hundredth of a gram on your forehead and see if you can feel that as you get round, your weight goes backwards onto your left hip and off of your right hip, in fact. Ah, here. See if, if you can look at me for one moment. I can lower my head like this, and I can lower my head like this. Can you see? I'll do it facing forward. I lower my head like this, and I can lower my head like this. Can you see in the second way, I'm going forward. Do you see that? I'm going forward. I'm not actually getting round here. I'm, my weight is actually moving backwards, not forward. Oh, that's much better, much better. Very good. So I'll tr I try as best I can to give you all the guidance that you need to do the lesson successfully. So see if you can turn to the right, round yourself, and move 
Let your weight move backward. Let your spine get round. That's right. Beautiful. Rest for a moment and just feel, close your eyes and just feel the right side of your neck, the right side of your face, your right shoulder compared to your left the right side of your neck compared to the left. And now slowly turn, turn your head and eyes and torso to the left a little bit, as if you wanted to look at something to the left of yourself. Just turn what's easy. And now slowly do the same thing. You get round and you lower your eyes, your head, your spine gets round, means that the middle of your back goes backwards. And your weight, you can feel that as you stay turned to the left, don't come back to the middle. That's right. You can feel slowly, slowly, just what's easy. You can feel that your weight this time is moving towards your right hip. If you allow your, your lower back to get round, you'll feel something very interesting that you're turned to the, to the left. But when you get round, your weight goes backwards. If you try to stay over your left hip, you, you lose the mobility in your spine. Slowly. You rest between each movement. It's, there's no, it's, this is not an exercise. Exercise, we have the idea that repeating something over and over again will, will get us somewhere, change us, improve us. We're not interested in repetitive, mindless movement. All right, very good. Stop for a moment, come back to the middle, put your hands on your legs and just observe if somehow the left side of your neck feels different. Something's changed the left side of your face. Beautiful, good. Bring your hands to your forehead again, and just slowly lower yourself, lower your head, get round and see if you can allow the rounding to round your spine, that the whole of you gets round, like a, like a little bug that when it retracts, it rounds its whole self. In the United States, we call it a June bug. A little tiny bug that gets round and you round yourself, let your pelvis tilt backwards. That's right. Beautiful. And please come back. And now walk around for a moment just to take a break. Of course, those researchers are right. Of course, we should move around more. And the more often we do, the better for us. Please come back and sit on the forward edge of your chair. And bring your, the pads of your fingers to your forehead again, just lightly, softly. And I'm not pushing, I'm not tensing my hands and slowly lift your head a little bit as if you wanted to look up toward the ceiling. As you exhale, 
as you feel where you can do less, not more. It's not a stretch. You'll see that if you, if you keep doing less, you will foster you will foster communication with your brain. If you make the movement strong and stretch, you'll see that the communication with the brain is, is hindered. Why? Because your brain has to be concerned with not straining a muscle, with not doing too much, with keeping your balance. But if you make the movement small and exhale, that's right. Why exhale? Because exhaling helps to relax your involuntary nervous system. That's right. And feel how now the back of your neck is getting shorter and your chest is lifting. Very good. Please put your hands on your thighs. Rest for a moment and just observe if anything feels different in your back, in your chest. And now put your hands on your pelvis just so you can feel what changes, how your pelvis moves. And see if you can, while just your hands are resting on your pelvis, I, right hand on the right side, left hand on the left side. See if you can slowly tilt your pelvis forward, meaning you stay, you stay sitting where you are, but you tilt your pelvis forward so that you feel from behind that your lower back arches a little bit. If you like, you can put one hand behind your lower back and, and feel how your lower back, those vertebra, which are very large vertebra, are tilting a little bit forward. And your tailbone, your sacrum, your tailbone is tilting ever so slightly backwards. So just do that slowly as you exhale, you tilt your pelvis. You tilt your pelvis ever so slightly, what I would call forward. If you, if you move your attention, if you move your attention to your pubic bone, your pubic bone is tilting down toward the floor, isn't it? As your tailbone goes backwards and up a little bit. That's beautiful. Just make it simple, not strong. Remember, a strong movement actually inhibits the using the incredible potential and intelligence of our nervous system to assist us. And it's, an, it, it's not a matter of having to tell our nervous system to assist us. This is the inherent property of our nervous system. Now, slowly, that's right, bring your hands back to your forehead and just slowly lift your forehead your elbows are forward and just pull the, move the skin. That's all you're doing. You're moving the skin of your forehead up a little bit and see if you can feel, if you stay over your, what we could call your base of support, your pelvis. If you could stay over your base of support, you'll find, oh, oh, my lower back arches a little bit when I move the skin of my forehead up a little bit. 
I just slide the skin of my forehead up and I find, oh, my pubic bone is doing the same thing that he mentioned a moment ago. It's tilting down and my, my coccyx, my tailbone is tilting backwards. Feel how your, your chest gets wider your chest moves up. Good. All right. Please put your hands on your thighs. Just rest for a moment. You can close your eyes, open your eyes, doesn't matter. But just observe your contact with the chair. All right, please turn to the right. Uh, let's, let's not turn to the right. Let's stay in the middle. Let's stay in the middle and put both hands on, the, on your forehead, your elbows forward, more or less. You don't want your elbows out to the sides and now, now, slowly, let's combine the two things that we've been doing. Meaning, you slide the skin of your forehead up as if you wanted to look toward the ceiling. And then you pull the skin of your forehead down a little bit to get round, small. That's right. And as you do that, just what's easy, you see if you can allow your pelvis to roll backwards when you lower your head. And if you can allow your pelvis to tilt forward when you look up toward the ceiling. That's right. And see if you can relax your jaw, maybe even open your mouth a little bit. Relax your throat. That's it. And feel how your elbows lift. And when your elbows lift, you can feel that the middle of your back arches a little bit. In other words, not only your lower back, but your thoracic spine. That's right. The middle of your back actually goes forward a little and your chest lifts and widens spontaneously. Not because that not because I want you to lift your chest. It's it's all happening synergistically, meaning meaning that simply because of lowering your head and letting your back move backwards and your pelvis tilt backwards. That's right. And then lifting your head and letting your pelvis tilt forward. And you'll find that it's easier to lift your head with your mouth open. Try, try once lifting your head and and closing your mouth, keeping your mouth closed, even closed tightly. And you can, oh my gosh, there's something about tightening my jaw that restricts the movement in my neck. And then if you allow your mouth to be open a tiny bit, you find, oh, the, my, the back of my head tilts backwards. Beautiful. All right. Please just appreciate how you're sitting for a moment. How you're sitting now compared to when we started. 
observe if your stomach feels more relaxed, your breathing. And now again, slowly come to standing and walk around for a moment just to, without looking at your phone, without getting distracted, just keep your attention oriented toward yourself, feeling even in walking where you can reduce the effort. Where in walking can you relax your shoulders? Beautiful. Please come back. Come back to sitting on the forward edge of your chair. Remember, we said that in the context of how we do the movements, we want to always be oriented toward doing less, reducing our effort. And this is also true for our hands. We would like our hands to be as soft as possible. In other words, without the only intention of my hands is that little bit of, of pressure that I need to move the skin of my forehead upwards. That's all, that's the only bit of pressure that we need. So you don't need to do anything special with your arms or your chest. Yeah, there, there, there's no way for you or I to be smarter than our brain. All right, now, please turn to your right and bring only your right hand to your forehead. So you turn to the right as we did before, your feet are still spread shoulder width apart and your nose is oriented to the right, your eyes, but only your right hand is on your forehead and do exactly what we've been doing, but stay turned to the right. So you, you slide the skin up and you look up with your eyes and then you bring your skin of your forehead down a little bit and you allow your back to get round, as round as you can. In other words, you let go but still some of you are coming forward. That's right. And when you look up, can you feel that your weight goes over your right hip? And when you get round, your weight goes backwards towards your left hip. That's right. Your elbow is making the same movement. That's it. Your elbow is lifting and lowering. That's it. Good. And then you round yourself. You round yourself. And your weight moves back to your left hip. And then you look up and you art, you rest anytime. You, you not only do you rest between each movement, but you rest whenever you wish. We, I'll still be here giving the directions. You won't miss anything, I promise. Now, see if you can feel that your left hip, when you look up, your left hip actually comes away from your chair. So see if you can do and it, you, see if you can do that a couple of times as you look up, you lift your left hip. That's right. You lift your left hip a tiny bit away from the chair. And then when you get round, of course, you lift your right hip a tiny bit away from the chair. Hip meaning your pelvis. 
when you look up and your elbow lifts and your eyes look up, you allow your weight to come over your right hip and your left hip to come a tiny bit away from the chair. That's very nice. And then when you get round and your elbow descends, that's it. And you're still feeling where you can do less work, where you can give up trying, trying to do the movement well, trying to do it nicely. In awareness through movement, believe it or not, we actually encourage errors, that errors actually stimulate the, our brain more than doing the right thing. It's hard to understand. All right, please stop. Bring your head and eyes forward, your hands on your thighs, just to rest and just observe. Does something feel different? The right side of your face, the right side of your neck, your right eye. Turn yourself to the left doesn't have to be a lot, say it could be 45 degrees, it can be less. Put your left hand on your forehead and slowly just do the same thing, lowering yourself and getting round and pulling, gently pulling the skin. You only need the tiniest bit of pulling the skin to initiate. In other words, there's no need to to resist that little pressure that's telling you, oh, I'm getting round. You don't need to make a muscular effort. And then you pull the skin of your forehead. It's as if you're following gently, you're following a little string that's pulling you up and lowering you. That's right, just gently. And now remember, are you allowing your mouth to open as you look up? That's it. And then are you allowing your lower back to get round? Are you allowing your weight to move backwards over your right hip? And then when you look up, your weight comes over your left hip but your, your, your torso, your head, you, you don't move forward over your knees. You, that's it. Beautiful. Come forward again and bring both hands to your forehead and just see if something is a little lighter. Are you seeing further up the ceiling? Then 10 minutes ago, that's it. As you exhale, that's right. Allowing the weight of the back of your head to go back. Beautiful. Okay. Go ahead and walk around for a moment. Just so you have the opportunity to observe your feeling of yourself. As you walk, feeling, relax your stomach, your shoulders. In other words, to see if you can generalize this internal orientation that you're having with yourself sitting in the chair, doing the lesson. See if you can generalize, take that feeling that attention into walking. You can, of course. All right, please come sit on the forward edge of your chair. Very nice. Turn to the right again, 
Oh no, let's, I'm sorry, stay forward and put your right hand, the back of your right hand behind your lower back. The back of your right hand behind your lower back. So your elbow is out to the side. Now, if that's uncomfortable for you, just bring the back of your hand more towards the left side of your, of your chest, the left side of yourself. You just have your back of your left hand facing forward, or if it's uncomfortable on your wrist, you can make a gentle fist with your hand, but the back of your hand is otherwise is open. And just slowly a few times as you look up, bring your elbow backwards, just your elbow backwards. And then you lower yourself and get a little round and get schlumpy. That's right, as if you're moving your back backwards, your spine is getting round. And then you come up and you pull, you pull your left elbow, your right elbow backwards. Good. And now switch your hands and do the same thing with your, your left hand. If you can put your left hand behind yourself, behind your lower back, great. Otherwise you can bring the back of your hand to the, to the left, toward the side of your chest, whatever is comfortable for you. You just, you find a place where it's comfortable for you. It's not an, not an issue whether, how far your hand is behind yourself. And now slowly look up towards the ceiling and pull your left elbow backwards. And then, and you round, and of course your elbow relaxes. And you might feel that pulling your elbow backwards towards the back of, that's right, towards your back helps you to arch your lower back. It helps you to allow your abdomen to go forward and your pubic bone to tilt toward the floor. That's right. As you exhale, just feeling where you can do less, where you can make that movement a little easier. Beautiful. Rest a moment, put your left hand on your left thigh. Turn your head and eyes about 45 degrees to the right. Put your, just as we did before, put your right hand on your forehead and, and put your left hand behind your lower back or wherever it's comfortable for you, wherever it's comfortable. And now slowly, just a few times, as you lift the skin on your forehead up and look up with your eyes and relax your jaw, then you bring your left elbow backwards, just slowly. That's it. You turn yourself to the right. You turn your head and eyes and torso to the right, what it, only what's easy. And then from there, staying, remaining turned to the right, you bring your left elbow backwards as you lift the skin on your forehead. So your, el your right elbow is in front of yourself, more or less. That's it. And allow your weight to come over your right hip as you look up. And remember, you still get round. Don't, don't leave the getting round out. That's right. In the Chinese in Qigong or 
Tai Chi, they say, they say in order to go up, you have to go down first. In order to go down, you have to be up. So don't forget about getting round. Good. Rest a moment. Again, observe the feeling in your right eye compared to your left eye, your right shoulder compared to your left. Turn yourself 45 degrees to the left or just what's easy. Put your right hand behind your lower back or wherever it's easy, comfortable. That's right. And then your left hand on your forehead. And you, you think there's a relationship between your right elbow going, your left elbow going up and your right elbow going backwards. It's as if your left elbow going up pulls your right elbow backwards. That's right. As you exhale, as you feel where you can do less. In other words, your attention is not external. Your attention is not on outside yourself, on your, what you're achieving, the movement in space, the, how big a movement. Your attention is internal. And as soon as you feel, as soon as you feel that, ah, I'm having to make an effort to go further, please don't. Please don't. Just stop and get round. That's it. Your chest gets flat. All of you rounds and your weight goes backwards. And then you begin to lift. That's right. And it's not, it's not as if it's two movements, two separate movements of your elbows. It's together, one elbow goes up and the other one goes backwards as if, as if that elbow represents some ancient wing and you're pulling the wing backwards. You're pulling your right wing backwards. Beautiful. All right, please stop and just Rest in the middle for a moment. Observe your feeling of yourself. And you feel that as you inhale, your lower abdomen is expanding. You feel that? You, you inhale simply, but your lower abdomen is expanding easily, simply. And that's different than at the beginning of the lesson. Most of us have a tendency to pull our stomach in when we inhale. But as the state of your involuntary nervous system changes, relaxes, moves into a healthier balance, you'll see that you're spontaneously, your lower abdomen expands as you inhale. And now put both hands behind your lower back. That's right. Or just where it's easy. In other words, the fingers, fingers can be touching each other. Or for some of you, maybe the one hand can be lying upon the other. Or your hands are away from one another. And now slowly go ahead and get round, as round as you can allow yourself. And your elbows move a little forward. 
and then slowly lift your eyes toward the ceiling and pull your elbows backwards as if as if your right elbow was going to come touch your left elbow behind you behind yourself and i said as if it's not i don't expect that all that anybody is touching one elbow to the other but you think you when you pull the elbows back and you look up toward the ceiling you can feel that there's something there's something that's cooperative about the elbows moving backwards and when you look look up meaning meaning that that those two movements are actually helping each other you feel that that when you when the elbows move backwards toward one another your pelvis tilts a little more easily and you can look up a little more easily and the back of your head goes further backwards. In other words, the back, your chin comes further away from your throat. That's right. And see if you can allow your stomach to come forward. And of course, we still get round, completely round. That's right. Giving up everything and then you can almost feel that vertebra by vertebra you can move your attention and feel that your entire spine from from your tailbone your coccyx all the way up to the top of your head is acting in a unified way to make a bow, you feel an arc. You feel that you you can begin. You begin to move up, lifting the skin, and your. Oh, sorry, we're not lifting. The, you can feel your forehead goes up, your tailbone goes backwards, your stomach comes forward. That's it, and your entire back, your entire spine, makes a bow and of course then when you lower your head your entire spine becomes round and makes a convex arc and then you look up and your pelvis tilts forward and you make a concave arch beautiful all right please put your hands on your knees your thighs And just take a moment to sense and feel your contact with the chair, the distance from your tailbone to the top of your head. Feel how the weight of the back of your head feels a little bit backwards compared to when you started. You, you can feel your awareness of the back of your head is different. Again, allow your abdomen to be relaxed so that your breathing can be easy. Unnecessary contraction of your abdomen disturbs your breathing. Your throat, And now very slowly come from sitting to standing. That's right. And just stand there for a moment and observe. Would you say that the top of your head is a little closer to the ceiling? Would you say that something feels different in your lower back? Would you say that your chest feels wider or narrower than when we started? Now, these changes that emerge through the doing of awareness through movement 
will continue to reverberate with you throughout the day. And I would like to suggest that to maximize the integration of these changes, that before you drift into sleep tonight, you take a few minutes, only a few minutes, to recall the movements of the lesson that you can remember most easily because it's during sleep that the real, true, and, and, um, and most significant aspect of our neuroplasticity comes into play, that it's during sleep that we integrate any new learnings Maybe even before you go to sleep, maybe in a couple hours, you remember, recall just a few of the movements. And come sit in your chair one last time. And just observe, there's something uniquely different about the way that you're sitting. We'll get much more into the weeds, so to speak, about sitting during the six weeks that we meet, if if you choose to come to the class. And what do I mean by the weeds? We'll get into what actually is healthy sitting. How can we understand it and why it, it reduces the stress so much? But right now, see if you can feel that you're actually sitting on your sit bones, that your lower back is arched a little bit. That's right. And your stomach is relaxed. And these are some of the hallmarks of healthy sitting. And by the same token, we can, we can talk about the challenges of sitting and what it, why it's so stressful for most of us. All right. Thank you very much for your attention. And it's been a pleasure to be with you. And adieu. Cheers.